A BBC investigation has found evidence that China's policy of transferring hundreds of thousands of Uyghurs and other ethnic minorities from northwest Xinjiang to factory jobs often far from home is being used as a method of uprooting and assimilating the population. It's also uncovered possible connections between these workers and some major international brands. Uh, China says that transferring workers away from the region is a way of tackling rural poverty and unemployment. Our China correspondent, John Sudworth, has this report. At this factory, the Uyghur workers are clearly visible. More than 2,000 miles from home, brought all the way to central China by a massive relocation scheme. Now the BBC has found compelling evidence of how it works. In this Xinjiang village, the authorities need a hundred people to send to jobs on the other side of the country. They set up a stall, but this 2017 state media report shows no one's interested. So they go house to house. If you stay here, this official says, you'll be married soon and never be able to leave. Will you go, he asks. No, she says. But with a mixture of propaganda and heavy persuasion, the young woman eventually agrees. I'll go if others go, she says. The BBC has new evidence that this separation from family and culture is, in part at least, precisely the point. A Chinese study produced for senior officials says labour transfers help assimilate Uyghur minorities, transform their thinking and reduce Uyghur population density. The study was posted online in error. Some of Xinjiang's mainly Muslim minorities are sent first to the giant re-education camps where China says it's fighting extremism, then to the factories. Hello. Hello. Very few have managed to leave China after their release. There were 200 workers in the factory. We sold children's clothes and we are obliged to sing the Chinese national anthem. They said, the faster you work, the faster we will let you go. But most of those transferred to work have not been in the camps and are sent direct from poor villages. The study also outlines how they are transported in groups, accompanied by security guards and put through political indoctrination. This is just an unprecedented authoritative source written by really leading academics and former government officials with unprecedented high-level access in Xinjiang itself. That drives home the implications of what is going on here. There are higher goals of manipulating population density and demographics that, in my opinion, are very concerning, and they really point us towards crimes against humanity. We found products that may contain yarn from this company on sale on Amazon in the UK. The factory says it no longer employs Uyghurs, and Amazon told us it doesn't tolerate forced labour. And this factory makes plastic mouldings for some major international brands. So we've spoken to one worker here who has confirmed that as many as a few hundred Uyghurs are employed in this factory. But unlike the Chinese staff, they are unable to leave the factory premises. In a statement, the Chinese government said the study seen by the BBC reflects only the author's personal view and much of its contents are not in line with the facts. But in large part, it echoes government thinking. Some Uyghurs, it concludes, are unwilling to leave their homes, a problem that should be tackled with strong guidance and persistent measures. John Sudworth, BBC News, Beijing.